It turns out Band-Aids may not be that great at aiding after all. Consumer watchdog blog Mamovation found, found cancer-causing chemicals on bandages from several brands, including two of the most well-known, Band-Aid and Curad. Dr. Linda Birnbaum, a toxicologist and former head of the National Toxicology Program, who co-led the lab testing, uncovered that the chemicals, also known as PFAs, enter the bloodstream through open wounds. Mamovation, in partnership with Environmental Health News, submitted several types of bandages to an EPA-certified lab, and after testing samples from 18 different brands, the lab concluded fluorine was present in 65% of bandages. Once in the bloodstream, fluorine, an essential component of PFAs, can lodge themselves within healthy tissue where it can begin to damage the immune system, the liver, and the kidneys as well as other organs. So Rising reached out to Ken View, Band-Aid's manufacturer, and we have not heard back. So what am I to do if I get a boo-boo, Amber? That's actually the email we sent. We said, what do we do if we get boo-boos now? I'm just kidding. We had an official person reach out from our production team who phrased it differently from that. But this really gives a different meaning behind the phrase, it's a Band-Aid solution, Amber. Yeah, it does. This is uh, obviously very concerning. You know, I, I have always wondered why a lot of people report getting rashes when they use Band-Aids and they always assumed it was from the adhesive. Maybe it could be from this PFAS. And for people who are unfamiliar with what exactly these are, they're known as forever chemicals and they're found in all kinds of household products. But most notably, one you might be familiar with is when someone tells you to get rid of your nonstick pans, it's because the Teflon surface usually has PFAS in it that can leak into your food, particularly if your pan gets scratched. So anytime you have a nonstick pan in your home, if there's a scratch on it, you should throw it away and probably just convert to stainless steel. Um, but yeah, the, there were a ton of Band-Aids apparently that tested positive for this substance. According to uh, The Guardian, there were brands like Band-Aid, Curad, Walmart, CVS. They tested 40 different types of bandages from 26 different companies and again found 65% containing alarming levels of PFAS. And some of the potential uh, consequences of having too many PFASs in your body are a reduction in your immune system, uh, increased risk of allergies and asthma in young children, uh, increase um, in high blood pressure for pregnant women, decreased fertility, cancer, all kinds of other really awful stuff. And it's pretty crazy to think that, um, you know, there are all of these things that we're told to do when we get sick or when we get injured. And one of them traditionally has always been to put a Band-Aid on an open wound to help prevent infection. But um, maybe you're not doing yourself all that, uh, all that much of good if your prevention of infection could lead to cancer-causing chemicals getting into your bloodstream. Now, it does seem ridiculous that a harmful chemical that shouldn't enter your bloodstream via open wound would be on band-aids. You'd think a company that cared about people's health would be more careful about this. It turns out they probably care more about making money than they do about us. So it's good when these independent groups decide, you know what, let's just test it. Let's just send it to a lab. Uh, we'll test the quality of what's in these band-aids. We'll te test them for toxins. But still a big mystery maybe as to why there's fluorine in the band-aids to start with. I did some digging to try and figure out why it might be in there. It turns out that large quantities of fluorine are consumed in industry, so big factories. I'm sure that a lot of the companies that produce Band-Aids produce other things as well. Uh, but it's used for cleaning metals and for polishing, frosting, and etching glass. But they use big machinery in these factories because they're mass-producing products. You know, is this a, a cleaning agent for a lot of the, the big machinery that is perhaps made of metal? Oftentimes it is, uh, you know, in these Band-Aid production factories. It's just really ridiculous. They should be more careful about it if it's as harmful as it is. And I think it's very telling that they decided to cut costs instead. I'm sure there's a proper process for cleaning the machinery afterwards to ensure that the fluorine can't get in products that are being literally put on open wounds. It sounds to me like this is the a, a classic case of them trying to cut costs in some way by putting out a product that's not safe, which is unfortunately uh, a story oldest time in the United States.
Yeah, it's actually, it's a, a disturbingly common. I mean, even if we just look at what's been happening with the opioid crisis in this country, that was a case, obviously, of big pharmaceutical companies uh, selling a product to doctors, telling them that it was not addictive, and then finding out exactly the opposite was true. And there's indications that the manufacturers of those drugs knew before they started shopping these around and giving kickbacks to doctors for prescribing them that they actually were not safe the way that they claimed. Um, one of many, many examples of of the supposed health companies actually hurting Americans rather than helping their health. And we talked uh, recently on this show, Jessica, a couple of weeks ago about Cheerios and, and Kellogg's and Quaker Oats and some of these other companies either using harmful red dyes in their um, products or uh, other chemicals that are very harmful to especially children. 80% of Americans we reported tested positive for a chemical that was found in Cheerios and Quaker Oats that could cause infertility or delayed puberty. And I think if you just look across the American consumer landscape, there are so many products that we purchase every day thinking that because we have an FDA that it's safe for us to consume or because we have a CDC that it's safe for us to take a, a pill or put something on our body because we think it's going to help us. And we find out down the line that actually these things were quite harmful and we're basically letting these silent killers into our house on a daily basis. And uh, there's a lot of discussion over whether or not these types of things happen in other countries. Um, a lot of people talk about how when they go to Europe, for example, they start eating non-processed food and suddenly feel significantly better. Some people chalk that up to the fact that they're just walking more, but I think there is something to that idea that our food supply is so overly processed and so mass manufactured that we're simply not getting the best nutrition for our bodies that we need and deserve. Yeah, we've also, I've seen videos of people saying, you know, I was walking the same amount that I walk in the United States. I live in New York right. City, I walk everywhere. And so when we think about that, it's definitely the food. Um, it's the milk, it's the bread, it's the additives and preservatives so that foods have a long shelf life. It's so much better when things are fresh and there's this movement of people that sometimes they call it homesteading. There's a lot of different names for it. Sometimes it's just like the woo-woo LA people. Uh, but for some reason, when it's in a rural small town, it turns into homesteading. But it's the same kind of thing of using food that's close to the source, using products that are close to the source. Milling your flour at home is not so much like a trad wife activity as it is sticking it to the man and big corporations that put a lot of additives in our food that make it unhealthy to eat. And I think, you know, if your child gets a cut now after understanding this story, rather than rolling the dice and putting a Band-Aid on them that might have literal toxins in it, I mean, people are going to start making cloth wraps at home like we used to. And then you come to this thought, why are we buying Band-Aids in the first place when we could wash, sterilize, and reuse a cloth that has no toxins in it at all? There are a lot of products we've gotten in the habit of purchasing because of convenience that turn out to be at best wasteful and at worst harmful to our health. And so I think a lot of people are pulling back from living this life of, you know, extreme consumerism and extreme convenience, not just because turns out these things are harmful and wasteful, but also because prices are so high and wages have remained stagnant that can people really afford brand name, brand name bandages? They might also enjoy cutting costs by using cloths to cover up wounds as well. Yeah, and there's something fulfilling and rewarding about creating things for yourself as opposed to just purchasing them from the store. There is this interesting crossover now between sort of the crunchy liberals and the uh, testosterone maxing right wing and, and how they've been really having an outsized focus on health recently. If people wanna know where they can buy safe band-aids. Um, maybe they're not ready for the cloth route just yet. You can go to ehn.org and they actually have a list of the band-aids that did not test positive for the PFAS. We'll be back, more rising after this.